Hey guys, welcome back to the cabin on this cold February day. Uh, I wanted to give you guys an update on the solar system I put in last year. It's working way better than I had hoped for. It's awesome. I love it. Um, but it's too cold to talk about it out here. Let's go inside, warm up, and talk solar. Okay guys, so I, I told you guys I would give you a uh, update on the new solar system that I installed last fall. Um, here we are, 1st of February, and we made it through those uh, shortest days of the year, the long dark nights. And uh, But just to back up a little bit for anybody that's new, back in 2012 I put in a 100 watt solar system, and it was okay in the summertime when the days are long. See here in the, in the far northeast, uh, in the summertime we have long, long days and the sun is high in the sky. But in the winter, as we get towards the end of the year, the days get shorter and shorter and the sun is lower and lower in the, in the sky. So the 100 watt solar system just wasn't enough for those months. Um, but it was all right. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of power needs down here anyways. Uh, but I do like to have a little power uh, for what I run. So what do I run? Well, I have about half a dozen LED light bulbs. Uh, I have my laptop. I have a little weather station. I have a cell phone signal booster and a, a fan and maybe a few other little little gadgets. But And, of course, the inverter itself, uh, it runs about 60 watts at any given time. So... Um, I run between, I think, around 120 to 200 watts of power at any time, depending on how much stuff I have running. So most of the time, I had to run the generator, and I didn't want to run a generator all the time. As a matter of fact, in, in November of last year, in 2017, uh, the ignition coil went on my, my main little inverter generator that I used to power the cabin. And I thought, ah, oh, sorry. I mean, I have a backup generator, so I use that. But anyways, I thought to myself, I want to go full solar. I don't want any generators anymore. I don't want to have to gas up. I don't want to have to rely on something mechanical. I just want to go full solar. So I kind of used what I'd learned over the years and from what I'd learned about the 100-watt system. And, and uh, I used another device called a, a kilowatt uh, meter, uh, which I'll show you in another clip here in a minute. And I used it to measure um, roughly how much power that I'm using. And with that, I determined that I probably need uh, two 235-watt panels. So that gives me 470 watts. And instead of two 12-volt batteries in parallel, which had 200 and 20 amp hours. I went with two 6 volt batteries in series that gave me 440 amp hours. So basically five times the solar power and twice the battery capacity. Um, and, and I said well the, the true test though is going to come in those uh, because that was in November so we're heading into those really short days and I said that's going to be the true test of whether this is enough to uh, uh, for me and and it is it's it's amazing I, I love it uh, it works so well I had all kinds of power as a matter of fact on the shortest day of the year it was dark at four o'clock in the afternoon and I ran the power all night um, I had everything going that I could I tried to run the power down and I think I only got the batteries down to something like 65 percent or something like that and of course with solar you don't want to go below 50 percent depth of discharge in your batteries but I, I didn't even come close on the shortest day of the year. And the next morning, uh, it was overcast, but those batteries were recharged in just a few hours. It, it didn't take long. Um, so everything is working extremely well. I'm really happy with it. I have not had to run the generator. Um, so that's a good thing. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to have so much power this summer that I'm, it's going to be a waste. So I'm thinking, hmm, what am I going to do with all this extra power this summer? What I've decided to do, I think I'll get a fridge. Now, I know, I know, that's, uh, 
that's a luxury. Wow, real fancy out here. I'm actually going to have refrigeration. Um, and I think I can do it. So I'm going to get uh, one of those small fridges and I'm going to build a little cabinet for it and I'm going to insulate it uh, again so it add, add a little more insulation so hopefully it'll use a little even less power. And I think I'll have plenty of power to run a small refrigerator here all summer. I think that's going to be great. I, I really look forward to having refrigeration out here. Uh, it's the little things. <laughs> Anyways, yep, extremely happy with it. So um, here's a little clip on the kilowatt meter. So for anybody who's uh, new to solar, and if you're thinking about putting solar in your cabin or in your house, uh, I highly recommend one of these little devices. It's called the kilowatt. You can get these on Amazon for a few bucks. They're not that expensive. And they have quite a few functions, but one thing that they do is uh, they measure how much power you're using in your devices. So for example, if I plug in this small fan I have in my window, you can see right now it's saying it's using zero watts of power. And if I turn it on, you can see that that goes up. So now it's it's saying um, this fan is using 28.2 watts of power. And if I turn it up higher to 30. And finally, uh, we're up around 37. Well, that's just about it for today, guys. But before I end the video, I want to give a shout out to another channel. I want you guys to check out Northeast Homestead, and there's a link in the description below. Uh, this guy's down in Massachusetts, and he does uh, homesteading. And uh, he, he has some really great videos. He shows you can do a, a lot with just one acre of ground. He has chickens, he has rabbits, he grows his own vegetables. Uh, he has some great videos, like I said, so uh, when you're done here, uh, check him out. And I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time here at the cabin.